Hello and welcome to the Northwire uh, Technical Training Roundtable. I have Greg Milkey, uh, Dwight Swigum, and Jeff Lewis in here with me today. My name is Bridget Locke, I'll be your host. And today we're going to look at retractile applications. So we'll be looking at the Northwire Coil Boss product line of retractile cords. And so if you could each introduce yourself, that would be great. Hey, my name is uh, Greg Milkey, uh, sales engineer here at Northwire, and I've been here uh, over 25 years now. Uh, my name is Dwight Swigum. I am supervisor of assemblies and retractiles. I have been with Northwire 11 years. I'm Jeff Lewis in field application. Um, I have 14 years of design experience, and I've been working with Northwire for six months. All right, Greg, we know that um, retractiles are often used in harsh duty applications. Could you talk a little bit about the most common end uses for retractile cords? Sure. Um, <clears throat> you'll see a lot of times in a automation type of environment where they'll use the retractile for continuous use, whether it's uh, flexing in motion, um, if there's a piece of equipment that they pull into place and they want to get it back out of place, they'll use a retractile so that way that cord is not laying in an aisleway perhaps or on the floor that could be tripped on or in the way of other equipment. Thanks, Greg. Um, Jeff, what about you? What is a common end use application that you've seen for retractiles? Yeah, one of the most common uses of uh, a coil cord is for um, ruggedized headsets in the military. Um, you see them with uh, the push to talk systems, anywhere with you know um, energy management, um, spatial concerns are addressed, and coil cords are great for those. So another application that we generally see is uh, in the medical industry. We'll get a request for a retractile with not as much memory or snappiness, but more pliable. So it can be in a handheld piece of equipment that a doctor or a surgeon may be using that, uh, that they can move it into place easily but not have any tension on it and then it'll come back out of place. All right, so we've looked at a range of industries from aerospace and defense to medical. Um, clearly, high flex life applications require coil boss products. Um, Dwight, could you talk a little bit about why we use retractiles in these high flex life applications? Um, one of the reasons is a safety. They uh, can retract out of the way so they're not laying on the floor, tripping over, tripping hazards. Um, we have them hanging from the ceiling, drop cords for aesthetics. Okay. Any handheld tools. Um, we have one that we use a quick release on the fire trucks. Yeah, in fact, uh, the fire truck one was, you know, an interesting thing. They came to us with a need, and we were able to put our Coil Boss product line to use in that need, where it's now a quick release where they just unplug it. In fact, they don't have to unplug it. They just get in their vehicle, drive out, and the retractile snaps back into place and out of the way of any other vehicles coming coming out of the garage. All right, let's talk a little bit more about materials. So how do these harsh duty applications, like what types of, different types of materials would you use in different applications and why? Well, our coil bosses um, use two primary materials. Both are extremely um, abrasive resistant, chemical resistant, and hydrophobic, <laughs> and resist absorption of water. In fact, our coil boss line is UL62 and <clears throat> outdoor rated. So that, that adds another element to, to the selling point of that product line. Not only is it a great indoor application, but it also works very well outdoor and to low, very low temperatures as well. Northwire has the ability to build custom coil cords with various materials such as high trowels, um, polyurethanes, polyurethane blends, um, TPEs, and as well as uh, PVCs. All right, so we've heard coil boss retractiles referred to as anything from snappy to slinky. Um, what different materials or different attributes go into the difference in the um, coil memory? Well, for example, on this red cable here, it's very tight. Um, and the material itself is the polyester, as Jeff alluded to earlier, the hytrel. And this is gonna give you your, your most snappy is finish and it, it has a lot of force to it when you do it. And then another uh, 
contributor to that is how tight it's wound. And we have, size of mandrel. we have various size mandrels that we wrap it on. Mm -hmm. And even though this is very slinky, so to speak, mm -hmm. it's the exact same material. But it's not nearly as tight and snappy, and that's just because of the size of the mandrel that it was wrapped on. Um, how does temperature affect the snappiness or the coil memory? Mm -hmm. The higher the temperature, the snappier it'll be. Okay. So the higher the temperature and the longer you bake it for also affects that. Um, another contributor to the uh, snappiness or the retractile memory is how thick that jacket material is. The thicker the jacket, the more memory it's going to have. The thinner the jacket, the less memory it'll have. Here at <clears throat> Northwire, we have several SOPs that we follow. Um, the Coil Boss has a uh, 5 to 1 ex uh, retraction to extension length. And we also like to stay um, inner diameter two and a half times um, the cable OD. You'll find this to be the optimal, optimal size for your uh, coil cord needs. You can get smaller but then you sacrifice some properties such as uh, force to elongation, um, just the overall feel of the coil cord. The other design consideration that you want to think when talking with your customers is, is uh, what Greg was alluded to earlier is, is wall thickness. Um, generally we like to stay in the 40 thousandths or one mil thick. Uh, again, you can go slightly smaller uh, and that will depend on the construction of the, the design or construction of the, the inner core. But if you stay at 40 thousandths, two and a half times the diameter of your um, cable, you're going to have a, a real nice coil cord and happy customers. Um, another recent material that we brought to the market, um, Biocompatics, also does a great job at coiling. That is a softer material, however that does retain the memory of a coil cord. So that you'll see is a great um, material for the medical app applications and fields because it's more pliable. It's not as rigid as some of these that you see here that we've been showing samples of, but it's more of a relaxed telephone cord, so to speak. When designing a coil cord, what types of requirements do you ask um, the customers, like what they need out of the cord? Well, once we get the, uh, the basic cable information down and we start looking at the actual coil cord, we'll ask them what their uh, retracted length is required. And that's this measurement here. And we, as Jeff was saying, we try to stay with a five to one extended to retracted ratio. So then five, five times would be the extended. Okay. Um, we'll make sure that if they do have a outer coil diameter, uh, that's critical to quality. We'll get that in case it's going to be in a tube of some sort. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll even run something down the center, so we'll want to make sure that we account for that. If, if there's nothing going down the center or this is not going into anything, then we do stick with the 5 to 1. Um, some other things we want to make sure of is the tangents, the straights on either end. Here you can see you got two different types. We got a parallel and a drop. And we'll get to define that as well as the lengths of those tangents. And also in some of our uses, we ask the customers if they want to be connectorized. So we've talked about materials. Um, let's talk a little bit more about shielding. How do different types of shields affect uh, the overall coil cord and how it will retract and that kind of thing? Okay, if the customer does require shielding on their cable, we do have options that we can provide. Um, however, we do try to stay away from the foils, the tapes and the foils, because they will get, in that uh, constant movement, they will get tore up and degraded. So we do try to steer towards a braided shield. However, that does pose problems as well. Um, so any type of shield in there does pose problems, but we try to stick with the, the braided shields when possible. Um, with that being said, we do try to isolate that braid. We might throw a, uh, a some sort of separator on either side of it to sandwich it in there to protect it. Mm -hmm. um, you might see some spun nylon flex facilitating tape or some PTFE tape um, in those applications. 
Sometimes we'll even go with a spiral type serve for a shield. However, that also causes problems because it'll tend to bunch on you as you're constantly going in that motion. There are, there are options. Other effects on the coil core due to, due to the EMI shielding is you tend to have to increase the, the thickness by at least a half a mil to compensate the, uh, the braided shields. So next we're going to talk to Tom about our upcoming uh, TIM or technical interchange meetings that we'll start doing. Um, but I want to thank you all for being here today and telling us a little bit more about our coil boss, uh, harsh duty application, retractile coil cords. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you.